What is up my dudes and dudettes? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bob and this is Oregon Native if you're new here. And we go on adventures and have fun, film it, and make cool videos for you to enjoy. So if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button down there and maybe even give me a like. Otherwise, this is past Bob that hasn't gone on this adventure yet. But, we're getting ready to go to Lake of the Woods. It's a lake in my local area. I've been to like every water place around my local area, but Lake of the Woods for some reason. I don't know if it's just because it's not the best lake or what's going on, why I've just never been there. But we're going to go check it out today and see what kind of trails and things we can find. And of course... I'm going to make a dope B-roll sequence with some killer drone footage and just all kinds of just beautiful stabilized footage put together in a sequence that will tell a story. So without further ado, smash that subscribe button. Just kidding. No. Without further ado, let's roll that B-roll sequence. Enjoy. Peace. you didn't see from the sign a second ago we're hiking up the Pacific Crest Trail so zoom you out a little bit give you more of a view of the surroundings look at them and enjoy the view of my water bottle as well so this is the normal natural Oregon wilderness Hopefully these sunny spots aren't too bad. I don't have an ND filter on right now. We should be fine, we're mostly in the shade, so. We'll see. But if all the coloring changes suddenly, it's because I put on an ND filter. What do you think of the woods though? Good stuff. All right. So, I told you guys a while back I would do an official review on the Canon SL2. Well, I guess it's about that time. I've been using the camera as my just regular everyday camera for, I don't know, about two or three months. Let me turn down this ISO for you real quick. It's a little high. Put it back down at 100. But yeah, so I told you I would do this review on the Canon SL2. But I've just yet to get around to doing the review. Well, now's as good a time as any. So everything in this video, minus the drone footage, is going to be shot on the Canon SL2. So any B-roll, any slow-mo, 
and just the talking videos. Everything is done on the Canon SL2. So if this is something you're considering buying, I recommend you clicking on the link in my description because I already found the cheapest price for you on Amazon. Also, it supports my channel because it's an affiliate link. So I get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon, but here's the best part. Even though I get a kickback, you don't pay any extra. So, sorry if some of this is a little blown out. It looks like I'm gonna have to put on the ND filter after all, even though I was trying not to have to stop to do it. So, let me go ahead and switch that out real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I guess as soon as I push record, a big truck comes by and hits her Jake brake. But I guess I lied a tiny bit when I said that everything would be recorded on the SL2 because, well, this is on my iPhone 11 because I need a little bit of supplemental footage here. So as you can see, ground's dry and everything here is nice and everything. But when we got up towards Lake of the Woods, it just started raining and raining more and more and more. So we decided that we would stop where the rain wasn't too bad and just find a cool trail if we can and just go for a hike and have some fun. And we found some cool lava overflows. So that was cool. But yeah, this short clip is just supplemental on my iPhone because I wanted to show you guys we weren't planning on just hiking a trail without going to the lake and getting footage of the lake because I've still yet again never been to Lake of the Woods okay so if you're just into the normal b-roll and YouTube vlogs and just regular videos that we do here then this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. If you are specifically here for the Canon SL2 review, now is when we're going to get into the more techie stuff, talking about the specifics of the camera, which if you're not in the market for a camera and into cameras will probably be pretty boring. Stick around if you want. Like I said, 
you could just watch the next video. So for the rest of you, these are the main selling points of this camera in my opinion. So first off, I'm coming to this camera from this one. So this is a Canon T5i. I used this camera for roughly around a year and a half, year, year and a half. And so, it was a great camera. It did really well for me. I only used it for about a year. I had it for about a year and a half. The problem is, is the first six months, it was just so complicated. I was afraid of it, and it just intimidated me. So, I just set it down and didn't touch it for like six months. And I just kept using my trusty iPhone. So, finally, I kept running into things that was showing how obviously I was using a cell phone. And I wanted to bring my quality up. And I knew that the first step was learning how to use a camera, so I got into that. Anyways, it was a good camera. But there were some parts of it that kind of fell short, which is why I ended up investing in the SL2. First one, for example, is the T5i does not shoot slow-mo in HD. You have to go down to 720p standard definition in order to shoot at 60 frames a second. I'd like to have 120, but it's not a deal breaker. I can get by with 160 just fine. So, long story short, I wanted HD slow-mo so that I could put in not just time-lapse segments, but slow-mo segments in my videos to help better tell my story. So I started shopping around and doing what research I could, and I ended up picking up this camera for right around like 450 bucks, I want to say. Somewhere between four and 500 bucks. And it has been a great camera since. But I just said the T5i was a great camera. So here is where things kind of get into the details. The Canon T5i, along with the only being able to shoot 60 at 720, also I had some dynamic range issues. So if I was in really bright sunlight, everything was blown out if I exposed for the shadows and vice versa if I exposed for the highlights everything that was in a shadow was pitch black you couldn't see it and if I tried to expose right in the middle of the two well then they both look bad so obviously there's indie filters and everything I'm talking about the camera I know there's ways to remedy things I'm talking about the camera so with the T5i its dynamic range I expected to get an improvement on the SL2 another thing was the autofocus I did a little bit of research and watched some other videos of my own and from what I could find out I heard that the autofocus was good on it but how do I know that that would have been better than what I had so I just had to roll the dice on it so turns out that there was a big difference from switching from this camera to this one. The T5i did good for what I needed it for and it got me by, but this one can actually keep up with what I'm trying to do currently. 
No, it doesn't shoot 4K. But I don't necessarily need 4K quite yet. I can wait another year or two before I need 4K. But the autofocus and the dynamic range is not a little bit better like I expected. It's a lot better. It's, it was a night and day difference. Going from the T5i to using the SL2 is a night and day difference. The autofocus, I mean, look. Look at this. I have half my face cut off before it finally switched over to my hand. And then I move my hand down a little bit, and it finds my face. The T5i couldn't do that. So this, I can put other things in the frame with me. And it, they don't just automatically take over focus because they're closer to the camera. See, I can cover up almost half my face and it still finds my face and stays focused on it. Can't complain. It tracks me over there, back here, up here, back here again, up here, oh, over here. Let's do some diagonal action. So it does just fine. Sorry you guys had to look at my ugly mug that close, but had to show you the autofocus. So there's a couple of features that are new as well that I didn't have on the T5i. The first one is the time lapse mode. So I can set it to record my own time lapse and just set it on a tripod and let it do its thing. I can set it on a slider or a motorized head for a tripod and actually record a hyperlapse with not having to do anything. Just set it up and leave it to do its thing. Normally I'm not into auto automatic features because with the T5i I've learned they're okay and they'll help you once in a while but for the most part unless you have no idea what you're doing you shouldn't use them because they're going to end up doing the wrong thing at the wrong time and mess up your shot you'd be better off just setting your focus setting the camera up and getting the shot that's not always the case anymore in fact most of the time that's not the case most of the time I can set the SL2 up and I've actually used autofocus on some professional shoots Which is crazy. Usually it's when it's like on a gimbal and like a, a real estate shoot going through the house kind of thing. You know, kind of situation you don't have to avoid. Something like autofocus. So I don't want to get lashed out and in the comments because I said autofocus on a professional shoot. Understand where applicable. Um, and then... Sorry. The other thing is the reliability. So, if I'm talking to you and I move, or like my hand is moving constantly, because I just, I can't help but move my hands when I talk, and the focus stays on my face, where I want your attention. So, long story short, if you're looking for a new camera... I've already found the cheapest price on Amazon for you. It's down there in the description. I recommend you get this camera. Especially if you're just getting into shooting video and taking pictures. This is an awesome camera. Another big upgrade that I noticed, especially as far as lighting is concerned is a 24 megapixel sensor versus the 18 megapixel sensor on this camera the T5i 18 megapixels 24 doesn't seem like a lot of a difference but it makes a big difference especially with the dynamic range because you have a bigger sensor that can let in more light 
So that's my spiel. That's I'm not gonna ramble on any longer because I've already been rambling for a really long time. So we're just gonna end this video. And thank you for coming by the channel. If you're not subscribed, you should be. See you later.